creating Amazon Cognito user pool and app client. Hello everyone, my name is Ankur Jain and this is the fourth video of this series. If you have not watched other videos, then please do watch. I have provided all the links in the description below. In previous video, we learned about uh, what is Amazon Cognito, the difference between Cognito user pool and identity pool and some of the key features of Cognito user pool. In this particular video, we will do the practical hands-on on, on uh, by creating an Amazon Cognito user pool. We will also create an app client and we will create a user in Cognito user pool. We will also create a group. We will add that user into that group. So we will do all this activity in this demo. So let's get started. So first open uh, your AWS console and just search for Cognito here. Okay, I have already uh, opened that page, but yeah. Now, once you select Cognito, you will, uh, you know, land here. Here you can select user pool. There are two options, identity pool and user pool. Just cl click on user pools, then click create user pool. So now uh, you get two options, provider types, Cognito user pool or federated identity providers. Federated identity providers is useful when you want to uh, include, I mean, if you want your users to uh, to be authenticated via Facebook, Google, Amazon, uh, Apple, or any OIDC or SAML provider. But uh, we are not going to redirect our users to those identity providers. We will just use Cognito user pool. I mean, uh, the user will uh, provide their username and password here, and that will be stored in user pool. So we will select what are the sign-in option. We, I will select email would be the signing option. For simplicity, I'm going with the Cognito defaults. Defaults for multi-factor authentication. Uh, for now, we just we don't need MFA for the demo purpose. And uh, for the user account recovery, just leave this uh, as it is and just select the email only because uh, user will be providing email while registering. Self sign self service sign up. Uh, just you know leave it default attribute verification and user account verification you can uh, send email message verify email address so yeah uh, once a user registers uh, he should be able to verify his email ID, uh, or her email address then just uh, go scroll down yeah required attributes so for registration i am not you know making any field mandatory just email uh, if you are you know developing a real world application then you can you know uh, select any field that you want or you want to keep mandatory but yeah for now we are just keeping an email as mandatory field now selecting next uh, how you want to send email so as of now uh, we are going to send email with cognito because if we go with SES then we have to set up all SES things so just for uh, for now we are just sending emails with cognito but there is a limit you can use it uh, to send up to 50 emails in a day so uh, if you you have a requirement where you need to send more than 50 emails then you have to go with SES then uh, I will not change it I will select next the user pool name uh, it, it would be dot net serverless serverless api user pool because we are creating this user pool for the demo of this serverless api then i will use the cognito hosted ui and for that i would need a domain so i will choose the same name however i can choose a different name but i will choose the same Okay, it is available. So this would be my domain for hosted UI. Okay, so now we are going to create an user pool. Uh, so at the same time, we are also creating an app client. And this app client would be, you know, basically will be representing your uh, web application that, uh, or, uh, that you are going to, you know, use for authentication. So if you are developing a web application, you will create one app client for web application. If you are creating an iOS app, then you will create another app client for that. If you are using an, if you are creating an Android app, then you will create another uh, app client. So you will create multiple app clients within the same user pool. So I'm just providing this name web 
app app client or i can do it like test app client because we are using thunder client to test so that that this app client will be just for testing purpose generate a client secret i will i want client secret and for the allowed callback url i think yeah we have this because thunder client requires this to be added as a callback url so i will add this and for advanced app client options we will on the authentication flow uh, select these two which are default and identity providers cognito user pool uh, authorization code grant uh, open id connect scope select everything and that's all i guess next so now cognito user pool sign in option can't be changed okay that's fine so, so now we are done I'm just creating the user pool. Okay, so we have created the user pool and we have got a user pool ID and the user pool is successfully created. Okay, so now what is the next? Next thing is creating an app client that we have already done. Now creating a user. Since we have created a, a user pool, we also need to create a user within the uh, user pool. So we'll create that. So I will just go here in, you can see multiple tabs here users groups uh, and uh, blah blah so i will just click on create user and i don't want to send email invitation so i will just select my email address and mark i'm marking this email as verified i don't want to get an email on my uh, mail account and just you know verify it and set a password so i will select a password okay then this password i have to reset once i log in first time but yeah for now that is fine so a user with my email id has been created here you can see and this email is verified and here you can see there is a force change password so once uh, the first time i will uh, log in on hosted ui it will ask me to change the password that's fine now what is the another create a admin group okay this is something that we would need uh, when we will be doing role based authorization but yeah uh, since we are on the cognito and we are doing everything on hands on so we will create a group here as well so remember a group is like a role so if you uh, if you create a role uh, if you want to maintain a role admin so you will create a group for that so i will create a group for admin and i will just you know i'm not providing other options just a group name and just creating the group now i want that uh, i have for example i have 600 700 users but i want to uh, provide admin access to few users so what i will do i will just select the group and i will add user and i will select the user uh, which as of now only i am the user here so i am adding myself in admin group so you can see uh, inside admin group uh, there are group members inside group members I am there okay so you can create as many groups as you want so you know for example for sales people you can create a sales group for HR for you can create a HR group and uh, you will get this group information in your JWD token so we will see that in our next lecture but yeah and we can use that information uh, to you know implement role based authorization so i think we have covered all the things that we need to do uh, in this hands on hands on lab so we have created user pool app client a user and a group so that's all for this lecture and i will see you in the next lecture thank you very much